Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we are watching another exciting game. This one was played in 1924 and it was played between Alexander Alechin, who was white, and his opponent Abraham Freeman. What is exciting about this game is that this uh, game was a part of blindfold simultaneous exhibition, which means that Alexander Alechin played many boards with blindfold on, so he was only using his mind and his imagination. Imagine how difficult that is, and most of the games these top grandmasters and world chess champions managed to won playing completely blind. So this is one of those games, a truly spectacular game with a great tactical motives, and I'm sure you will love it. So without further ado, we will go straight into the game. Alexander Alechin started the game with e4, we have e5 on the board, and we have d4, so-called center game. We have e takes on d4, and right now Alechin continues with c3. Now in this position, this is a part of a Danish gambit, his opponent decided to play d5. In this position, what is also possible for black is to play d takes on c3, and then white usually continues with bishop c4, and after that c takes on b2 is played, and after bishop takes on b2, white has these two powerful bishops, and he has developed his two pieces. This is usually not recommended playing for a black because white has a tremendous development. Yes, for two pawns, of course, but this is usually lost for black because white simply has an overwhelming advantage in the opening. So his opponent, after c3, decided to play d5, and we have e takes on d5, and queen takes on d5 is played. We have c takes on d4, and for now, Alechin has this isolated pawn that can be good and also can be weakness in the game. Game continued with knight to f6 for black. Alechin continues with knight c3, attacking this queen, but instead moving this queen, black decided to play bishop b4, and right now, of course, this knight is pinned, so you cannot take the black queen. We have knight to f3 for Alechin, knight to c6 for black, now pressuring this pawn. We have bishop to e2, developing move. Black decided to castle. Alechin also castles, and right now black decided to play bishop takes on c3, which is not the best move here. The best continuation, at least by Alechin and by the computer, is actually queen to a5, so still keeping the tension is the right way to go. But after bishop takes on c3, b takes on c3, this pawn is no longer isolated, and now it's easier to defend. We have b6 on the board, another mistake made by black here. After b takes on c3, actually the recommended development for this bishop was on g4, but after b takes on c3 and b6, black decided to fianchetto this dark squared bishop here. This was his plan, which is not good, of course, because this allows white to storm in the center, firstly with c4, and after queen to d8, we have d5 on the board right now, pressuring this knight and also blocking this diagonal here. Knight retreats to e7, and we have a knight to d4. Right now, again, a beautiful square for this knight, and later in the game, this knight will have many options to jump. A really nice square for this knight. We have bishop to b7, developing move for black. Lechin continues his development, and he definitely finished his development with bishop to b2. Right now, we have c6 on the board, undermining this pawn, and uh, black is trying to open up the position. For now, Alechin temporarily sacrifices his pawn with bishop to f3. Right now, after c takes on d5, rook e1 is played. Right now, aiming at this knight and also taking the advantage of the e-file. Of course, as you can see, black cannot take this because this bishop is free and is hanging. We have rook to e8 for black. And right now, queen to d2 played for Alexander Alechin, connecting these two rooks. Black continues with rook to b8. His idea is that now he wants to guard this bishop, so he doesn't have any troubles with picking up this pawn later in the game. And right now, we have a great move by Alexander Alechin, queen to g5. Now, in our game, a knight to g6 is played. But we will go a little bit back, and after queen to g5, let's say black played something random like a6. Feel free to comment here what Alexander Alechin had in mind for his opponent. You have a great tactical strike. Pause the video and let me know what is the best move and best continuation for white in this position. And of course, if you wish, you can also click the subscribe button for more of these videos. Of course, I will now show you if you didn't see it. So the tactical strike here is actually knight to e6 attacking this queen and also threatening checkmate here on g7, practically forcing a black to pick up this, uh, this knight or lose your queen. We have f takes on e6, and right now bishop takes on f6 with a checkmate threat again. 
And right now, if black, for example, decides to protect with g6, this checkmate, obviously, this is a weak square because this queen is pinned. We have bishop to g4 with the next move. And right now, after bishop to c8, uh, black has to uh, try and save this pawn as much as he can. But right now, instead of picking up with your bishop, you will continue with picking up with your rook. And this is the way to continue this game. As you can see, an overwhelming advantage for white. If, for example, black continues with bishop picking up on e6, we have bishop picking up on e6 with a check, king on f8, and queen h6 is the checkmate. So after rook to e6, the best way to continue this game with will be to play bishop d7, but after c takes on d5, this is almost an 8-point advantage for white, and the game is completely lost here. So that is the reason that black saw this uh, after queen g5 and he played knight to g6, correct move, but right now Aliakin again continues with knight to f5. A great move again, bringing another piece in the attack on this weak king. We have trade of the rooks. Rook picks up on e1, and right now, black decided to pick up this with d takes on c4. In the game, a bishop takes on b7 is played, but Aliahin even had a stronger move here, which he missed, of course. He was playing a blight point simulation exhibition. So the best move here for white actually is to play knight to e7. And right now, if you decide to play knight takes on e7, we have bishop takes on f6. And right now, uh, you will uh, basically... Uh, black is in a lot of trouble because this knight is hanging and it cannot be defended. Checkmate threat is hanging. So one of the ways to, continues the, to continue this game as black is to play queen to f8. But as you can see, bishop takes on e7 and the game is done. Of course, in this position, we saw from before, after knight to e7, you are not obligated to pick up this knight. You can play king to h8. But right now, Aliahin would continue with bishop picking up on f6. And right now, if you decide to play g takes on f6, simply queen takes on f6 is checkmate and after bishop takes on f6 you can continue with queen to f8 when then will white continue with knight to f5 and again a devastating attack on the black king and the game is done uh, so that is the reason why uh, this was a better move but bishop b7 is played and after rook takes on b7 for black white again continues beautifully with bishop takes on f6 and now black here thought that all of his problems were done but they actually not if you wish, you can also pause the video and see what would happen here. In the game, g takes on f6 was played. But of course, we will go back and see what would happen after bishop taking up on f6 if you decide to pick up with your queen. Then, uh, weak back rank here is the way to go. And you play rook to e8 as white here. And right now, after only move knight to f8, you continue with knight to h6 here, and as you can see, the situation is really hard here uh, for black, there is no way of stopping this checkmate, if you go on h8 with your king, rook on f8 is the checkmate, after knight to h6, if you decide to pick up with your queen, then beautiful sacrifice, rook picks up on f8, king picks up on f8, and queen d8 is a spectacular checkmate. So, after bishop takes on f6, g takes on f6 was played for black, and I that. Aliakin played queen to h6, threatening this checkmate on uh, g7 square. The only move for black is to play a queen to f8, but right now the game finished. Black resigned after rook to e8. Simply, there is a checkmate threat on g7. You cannot stop. If you decide to pick up this rook, obviously queen g7 is checkmate. But after rook to e8, there is simply nothing you can do. You can play any move for black. Let's say you come here. Queen g7 is again checkmate because this queen is pinned. A truly spectacular way to finish the game. And this is how Aliakin won this game, guys. And this is all I have prepared for you today. If you enjoyed this game, please make sure to leave a comment, like, and share this video with other people who enjoy chess because this really helps with the YouTube algorithm. It pushes my videos. And as you all know, I'm trying to make this channel a primary source of my income. So all of your support is much needed and much appreciated, guys. Thank you. Also, feel free to let me know your questions about the analysis of this game, about Aliakin games in general, or anything basically else you would like to ask. Maybe you can recommend a game to me. I would gladly uh, look it up with you. If you have some fun games you would like me to explore, feel free to share them. I always enjoy reading, re reading your comments, guys. And yes, this would be all. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see each other in the next video. I wish you a pleasant night. Bye-bye.